Hello, I'm Toby. I'm a certified professional horticulturist, and I'm coming to you from this beautiful hellebore patch at Venture Out Nursery on Whidbey Island. And I'm here today to talk to you about holistic gardening. So this is a passion of mine, and it's easiest for me to explain what holistic gardening is if we think a little bit about holistic medicine. So holistic medicine, if you are, maybe have a tummy ache or something like that, and to use holistic medicine to solve that, the practitioner is going to look at your whole body and all of you and what your mental state is and what's going on in your life because they recognize that there could be lots of factors contributing or that could help adjust that particular malady in that particular part of your body. So when we apply that kind of thinking to the garden, we're thinking about the garden and its place in the greater landscape. So as part of an ecosystem within a bigger ecosystem, as a little tiny piece of the big whole planet. So in my own holistic gardening practice, I'm always looking to do no harm. I'm asking myself what the consequences of my actions are on a bigger scale than just, I wanna plant this plant, the consequence of my digging this hole is I'm gonna get this plant in the ground, or the consequence of my squirting this insecticidal soap is gonna kill that bug that's eating my plant. I'm asking myself, well, what else, right? So when I'm creating a new garden bed, or when I'm planting a plant, or when I'm choosing a fertilizer to use. I'm thinking about the soil structure and the soil food web. And am I going to negatively impact the soil or the food web when I do my thing? So I use sheet mulch when I can, instead of digging all the turf away and tilling up the soil. Um, I am careful about the soil structure when I dig a hole so that I'm not putting the bottom parts of soil on the top and vice versa. Because all the creatures that are responsible for plant health and soil health are very specific about where they are in the ground and they're impacted by the chemicals and the fertilizers that we use. So I'm trying to be respectful of them when I dig. When I'm looking at plant illness, the first thing I'm going to ask myself is, is this really a problem or is it just cosmetic? Plants can put up with a lot of issues and I get a lot of people come to the nursery with a leaf and they think it's a big problem, but really it isn't necessarily, right? So one thing is to accept a new paradigm of beauty in the garden and a little bit of, you know, imperfection is probably just fine. If it is an issue that needs treatment, then look for the least toxic solution and ask who else might be impacted negatively. So for instance, if you choose an insecticide, is there another beneficial bug that's going to be killed by the same insecticide that you're choosing? In many cases in nature, when we just pause and we let nature have a chance to heal something, oftentimes she can. So think about the aphid, right? So some people see aphids on their plants and they instantly want to kill them. But what we need to see is the aphid isn't a problem, it's an opportunity. The aphid is a food source for lots of different birds. It's a food source for many beneficial insects. So if we can withhold our chemical treatments, nature will send in the balance to the problem. So sometimes it's just creating space for nature to fill the issue and present the solution. When it comes to things like garden cleanup, I ask myself first, am I tidying for the sake of tidy because this is the sort of like cultural standard that's been presented to us? Or is this for the health of plants? And in most cases, so much of what happens in garden maintenance is not to the health of the ecosystem, right? So instead of cleaning things up in fall, let nature be. In the leaves on the ground, leaves are nature's way of fertilizing. It's nature's way of building soil. So letting your leaf debris lay. 
Also, insects are hiding under the leaves. The beneficial insects are hiding under the leaves. Their egg cases are there. And so by letting things be, we're allowing those populations to build and expand. The safest time for cleanup from a holistic gardening standpoint is in spring after we've had a few weeks of 50 degree weather. That's when the beneficials have been able to emerge. And then practice what I call chop and drop. So cut your overwintering perennials and that sort of thing. Cut them into little pieces and let that leaf debris lay. You may see that happening around me. And we do that intentionally here at the nursery to help build the soil and to provide habitat. The other thing is all those bugs that are overwintering in those leaf litter and debris like that, it's food for birds. So we see lots of birds around pecking and looking for all the protein rich insect larvae that they need. So I hope that gives you an idea of what the holistic gardening mentality is and how to employ it in your garden. It's, you know, can go other under names like sustainable garden or eco-friendly gardening. All of that is good. Um, if this resonates, please share it with friends. If we act together as a community, we can help be the change that we want to see in the world. And we can make a healthier planet one garden at a time. So thanks for watching and happy holistic gardening.